Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the Cleveland Torso Murders. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page. Caught you red-handed. Saw you doing your stupid face at the beginning. Don't even pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about. Let's move on. I don't, I, I, what, are you, what are you talking about? Me? Oh, no. Answer the question. Taking it over to Graham City. Here's from Miss J Groves. Does Shane realize how easy it would be to pin a murder on him? The stuff he says is very suspect. I don't think you do realize that. You've said a lot of uh, incriminating things. I don't think I have. I have a, a precious um, a butterfly encased in glass. I would for sure, every night of the week, be down at a bar, a gambling den, or a brothel. Well, I guess I'll go into town this weekend and murder, murder. some people. The things he did were pretty, uh, for lack of a better term, wonderful. Worse. If there weren't modern devices, you'd be, I'd be a monster. an insane psychopath. Yes. I'm going to head down that road of having a room that's full of... Like a serial killer's den? Is that what Yes, but sort of like a, a well-traveled serial killer. Chime off in the comments, who's more likely to be a murderer? One day. It's obviously Ryan. One day. Moving on to Facebook. Yeah. This comes from Dan Botham. Did they ever identify the chemical preservative that some of the bodies had been treated with? Chromated arsenicals. Oh boy, I'm gonna sound- Why did you pick this if you couldn't pronounce any well, of it? Well, because it was a good question, but now I'm gonna sound really dumb. Creosote, pentachlorophenol, formaldehyde, embalming fluid because that could seriously narrow down the list of suspects. Embalming fluid is a cocktail of chemicals and each funeral home would have their own special, special blend. Every source I looked at just said chemical preservative. There was actually one source I looked at that said it looked more like her skin was red from a chemical burn. So unfortunately, I, I could not find what the fluid was. Sweeney did have the embalming house right next to his office. Sweeney was a secret suspect at the time and they couldn't really march into an embalming house and be like, let me see your cocktails. I mean, if they were cops, just do it. I don't know. Are you able to walk into a mortuary home and be like, let me see your lab? What do you, what do you got on tap here? <laughs> Back to Graham City. Here's from Kager. What? Hey, hey Ryan, what month is it? Oh, you. Really funny, huh? February. February. See, that even sounds weird to me. Oh, I did it correctly. I bet you if I looked it up on Merriam-Webster's dictionary right now, it would have uh, the correct pr pronunciation. Look, very easy way to solve this. We, we stumbled upon this last year. It's Febs! <laughs> let's get those, let's I, get that first, let's get the streamers and the I, big, it's Febs, baby! I can't see Air horn Febs in the middle of an episode. It's still happening, right? Oh, here it's we go. Febs in an episode? Merriam-Webster, February. All right. It doesn't say February. Right? Okay, you say it. No, you say it. February. Here we go. February. February. He didn't say the R. Some people say the R, some people don't. Some well, people, then what the hell? Well, okay. well, yeah, but you say February. February. That's better. February. On February 2nd. That's a little better, yeah. This one comes from Carmen Martin. If only three bodies were identified and none of them were even found in one piece, then how is it known that most of the victims were vagrants or sex workers? Also, while it's not implausible that Frank Dolezal was, was murdered, it's also not implausible for him to have hanged himself. All he would have had to do was bend his knees and let gravity take care of the rest. He definitely got a bad rap though, and whatever justice he received for being proven innocent came too little too late. First part of that question, the reason why they figured they were vagrants or sex workers was because they didn't have any identification on them. Uh, the second part of that, I would think that even if you, you bent your knees to sit, for example, wouldn't your survival instinct kick in automatically and your legs would, I don't, I don't know. I guess my mind isn't in a, in a dark enough place, but. Morbid question for a, for a morning like this. Yeah, I just. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Robin Greer, wait. But if the victim with blood on the ground had been there for two months, isn't it possible that the person was actually the first victim rather than the killer losing his touch? The first killing was impulsive and the rest were premeditated. The sixth victim, an unidentified 40 year old man, had been dead for two months. The blood was there for two months, but the first killing was one year prior. Oh, so Robin should pay more attention. 
maybe, I don't know. Good to ask a question every now and then. Sometimes you need a, re, uh, you need a clarification. Okay, sorry, Rob. I got a little uh, yeah, yeah, hostile he, there, Rob. Uh, he, he hasn't had his morning coffee yet. <laughs> you feel better? You just <laughs> dropped coffee all over the table. Oh, now you, what the? <laughs> Back on over to Graham City. Uh, here's Katie from Katie. My favorite holiday is also the 4th of July. What do you like most about it? What th There's a lot that I like about the 4th of July. I want to make clear that the questions I picked were from Facebook, and the <laughs> questions that Shane picked were from Instagram. Mine was a, you know, discernment over a detail in the case. His was, what do you like about 4th of July? You know, you get the barbecue thing going on. People have little, there's a sort of like a, feels like a, a block party around the whole country. Everybody's kind of out, your neighbors are out. Even in the ones you don't like, you're talking to them. You know, you, just, you, smell, you smell meats in the air. You, 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 got, you got people hanging out on the street till late at night. It's just a wonderful time. Some people go to the beach. You know, it's so just, some people uh, go to the beach. It's just another American holiday to celebrate gluttony. Uh, Certainly. You like 4th of July, right? It's fine. It's not, it's not even in my top five, probably. It's not in your top five? No. The Midwest, the East Coast, they get 4th of July. You guys out here, you don't understand the value of a summer. And that's fine. You guys are just different out here. Yeah, we just enjoy being comfortable all the time. Yeah. What a bunch of assholes. What, yeah, basically. He took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Next question. This is from Facebook. This is Joe Tanchillo. Hey guys, what's up with Detective Murillo saying Sweeney was too overweight to ride a train between Newcastle and Cleveland? What does that even mean? Detective Murillo felt that Sweeney was too overweight to make the rail trip back and forth between Newcastle and Cleveland, which consequently led to Murillo's discounting of Sweeney as a suspect. I feel like the only way you could be too overweight to ride a train is if you weighed like 12 tons. When I read that, I thought that was odd too. Uh, no further explanation given though. He was just, oh, he's too overweight to ride the rails. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, what is with that? I don't get that at all. It doesn't make any fair sense. question, it's a what's with that? It's a train, I, I don't know. I don't know what's with that. What's with that? What is with that? Joe, I'm with, we're with you. What's with that? All right, back to Graham City. No, wait a second. There's a second part to that question. More importantly, why does Shane look like he's out to lunch at the beginning of every Q&A episode? I mean, it, I think it's hilarious, so please don't stop, but I gotta know why. Uh, hashtag Shaniax. I, I honestly don't know what he's talking about here. I think we could cut to, uh, maybe just, you know what? Cut to the last three beginnings. Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved. A show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved. The most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved. I, got, I don't know what to tell it's you. It's either a bit or uh, he has holes in his brain. We got one more from Graham City. He has holes in his brain. Uh, this one's from Aspirin Stan. Hey boys, do you like black licorice? Yeah. I think. I don't I, hate it. I think it gets a bad rap. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't actively seek it out. People treat it like it's the worst thing on earth. Artificial like, banana flavor is pretty bad, right? Actually, I enjoy artificial banana Do flavor. Do you? It's like really good. It's my favorite haichu flavor, actually. Do I know there's something I hate? Truth. Truth? I hate the truth? Go surreal. Let's move on. What do we have coming up this week? This week we have a case that is lined with secrecy. There is a lot of weird details that go into the case. We don't know who the victim is. We don't know who killed her. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you tune into the episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, and maybe we'll answer it on the next postmortem. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll get them all next week. All right, well, see you later. Um, that is it for postmortem. Now we move on to the post show. Uh, our weekly Q and A concluded. I now welcome you Wait, to the. Wait, can I just? I want to see how part long of the show. No, nope. just give me the on. Not that long. Chill, bro. Yeah, just give me the courtesy of knowing how long I have to sit through this stupid shit. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the hot naga. The hot dog saga. I guess I could check my email. Commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me, and adored by every single viewer. A can of soup, a french fries, and a holographic corn board a ramshackle old spaceship. Welcome to the Minestrone, a first-class twin engine. She's a little beat up, but she'll get you to the drive through if you know what I'm saying. Like this ship, it's a beaut, a shippy beaut. How'd you snag such a fine chunk of metal like this? I ran guns 
You don't mean in the space wars? You mean when Space Pope Chili the Ninth declared war on soups? Yes, of course. No need to explain that. We'll remember it always. Many soups died. Ooh, which side did you fight on, Mike? Were you in the sauce? Gene, that's rude. That is rude, Gene. I was in the sauce. I fought for soups. I'm soup. Thank you for your service. Say, you're not THE Mike Soup, are you? The Soup Baron? The pirate captain who personally assassinated Space Pope Chili the Ninth and brought an end to the space war, but also blew up a civilian transport in the process and became a space pariah, forced to the Outer Rim, where he continued to fight the remaining hostile factions of the Chile Empire who refused to acknowledge the Treaty of Versailles? That was a mouthful. I just realized there's probably no. a lot of people that don't even know what's going on if they're tuning in for the first time. No, I'm not that Mike Soup. Okay, where we going? We're headed to planet Tamat Zero. I know a guy there who can get us the Bernoulli converter we need to make the hyperspace jump to the wormhole in the gra in the Graxil Graxil in the Graxilon quadrant. Your body's trying to save you. Enough talky time. More spacey time, idiots. We gotta get back in. T we have to go back in time so I can save my dead wife and all your stupid friends. Very well, Minestrone. Yes, Captain. That's the spaceship talking. Engage the twins and set a course for Tomat Zero. Aye, aye, Captain. And then we, pl like, play some Star Trekish music. Are you doing a hell impression? I guess it's, it's kind of like a computer, yeah. There's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of backstory in this. Are you pleased with it so far this season? I was thinking, though, we have a, a PA today that's working on the show for the first time, and she looked... Very, very confused. She's jumping up and down right now. No, she's not. She's sitting down, actually. Yeah, that's, yes, I was inspired by Tolstoy. I think she may have mouthed, did you just say, yes, I was inspired by Tolstoy? That's what, I think that's what she was asking. No, she, she didn't Tolstoy? ask Tolstoy? No, no, okay. Well, a little Dostoevsky, but uh, get, Tolstoy's get, not my scene, so. 